And folks, welcome everybody to another thrilling episode of Andy in the Shed. Uh, just give me a shout if you can hear me okay, whether I'm too too low, too high, too shrill, too bassy. Let's see who we've got in the chat. Tim Maslin, hello. Uh, Haunted Railway Jake, hello Jake. Uh, Tony, nice to see you, Tony. Uh, Andy from March West Junction, super. Robert's train set, now there's a story. Hello, Robert, nice to see you again. Uh, SJ Train World, yay, hello, Simon. Uh, Leamington Station, good afternoon, Graham, nice to see you. Dino, <laughs> always a pleasure, my friend. Uh, Valley's 56XX, uh, as you all know, that's Chris. Hello, Chris. Uh, Digger Evans, Model Railway. Hello, Digger. Great to see you, man. Moneybrook Junction. There's Mark. Hello, Mark. Uh, glad you got the um, the platforms okay. Um, I, I sent them a, a first class, you know, no messing about. Just yeah, get them out there and get them there quick. David Hall. Hello there. Nice to see you. Uh, have I recovered from yesterday's trip? Well, I have, but I'm not sure my feet have. Uh, they, it was um, it was a good trip yesterday. We had some half decent weather. It was a little chilly and windy, but um, yeah, it was okay. Roy Dennis, good afternoon to you. It's lovely to see you. Um, Alan Reynolds, good heavens, Alan. Nice to see you. <laughs> you you're never late. Uh, a, a Sunday clubber is never late. Toto wagons, nor are they early. They arrive precisely when they mean to. Thanks, Gandalf. Yeah, right. Okay. Enough of that. I always say your foot, feet were connected to my body. Well, they don't feel as though they're connected to my body at the moment. It's um, it's all a bit um, yeah. Um, it, it was a lot of walking. Thanks again, Andy, setting her up now as I'm watching. Oh, fantastic. That's good news. Um, yeah, I, I put it out there that I had some Hornby platforms to um, to part out. And um, they've been sitting in a box for years. Um, they've never been on a layout, I don't think. And they still had the original price tag on them. So... Um, I, I came to an agreement with Mark and I, I sold them to him for the original price. Um, you know, it's, it, that's just, just the way it is. That's what we paid for them. That's what they should go for. You know, I'm not in it to make profit or anything uh, shady like that. Yeah, nasty. Um, yeah, talk about money. Um, must be warm in there. This is just a T-shirt. Yes, it is. It's brightened up today. It started off rainy. But it's now the, the sun has got out. The dog is laying plastered out on the on the grass. Stuart the Fish Whisperer, hello. Nice to see you. Good afternoon to you. So, yeah, let's let's start off. It's a packed program today. Uh, I'm running um, Longmore Military Railway stuff today. Um, Longmore Military Railway was. Uh, a little MOD railway, Ministry of Defence type thing. And they had this really nifty paint scheme, which was uh, like a dark royal blue and red. Um, not, as you, as you can see from El Shanta behind, that's, um, that's the Class 11 Shanta, which uh, Helgan have just bought out. And it's, it's a good one. It's a little peach. Um, very similar in the German style, where they had black and red. Well, Longmore Military Railway, with LMR plastered across the tender, um, had this royal blue and red. And, yeah, really rather fetching, which makes it, well, it's eye candy for people that like the unusual. Uh, watching while painting the kitchen. I must be mad. I should be in the loft. Well, just move the kitchen into the loft, Alan. Problem solved. Mick 92. Mick was stationed there in the early 70s at the Longmore Military Railway. How about that? Um, I, I did promise, and I'm as good as my word. There's the Longmore Military Railway. 
Where's the hot dog? There's the hot dog. Right there. <laughs> yeah, well, a bit, a bit that way. Yeah, that, that's, that's the logo. It was a convoluted story to get it on a T-shirt, but I got there. Um, <laughs> no, I haven't got any spears for sale. Um, I, I suppose I could do it because once you approach a T-shirt manufacturer to do you a one-off, they invariably email you to do more and more and more. So I suppose I could probably... The hot dog, yeah. Yeah, that all comes from a, a, a phrase from the film The Right Stuff, which was uh, the start of the American astronauts. And there was one particular uh, Air Force pilot. Uh, was he Air Force or Marines? Um, Gordon Cooper, who was a, a hot dog pilot. I mean, he was a real um, beat up the airfield kind of guy. And uh, there's an interaction between Gus Grissom, who you know from the space program, and Gordon Cooper. And it's brilliant. Um, and that's where I got the idea from it. I said, well, hot dog, you were just in my shadow, right where you'll always be. <laughs> Now, due to the time difference, we're probably uh, not going to see any of our American cousins in here because it's an hour early for them. I beg to differ. There is Dwight Curley. Hello, Dwight. You must be up early. Great to see you. <laughs> uh, and Andy Dobson. Hi, Andy. Good to see you, man. Uh, oh, Ivo Van Zon is in the house as well. Uh, they look nice. But weird. Uh, hang on. Let me just reiterate that um, it was. I have a T-shirt. If you ever, I'll have a T-shirt if you ever do some. Well, you know, I could do. It's just getting sizes, Chris. Um, let me just reiterate that the the logo was um, done by by Chris uh, Valleys. 56xx so uh thanks chris uh took a photo I, I took a photo hammed it up a bit and chris did the rest so uh chris is really good at that kind of stuff and um facilitated the ability to get a, a logo on my thumbnails and things and a, a logo for a t-shirt so a big thank you to chris there and there's uh, Osmerica Model Railroad. Now, hello, Artie. It's 12 a.m. here. And my visitor bought rain with him. Oh, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. But uh, it's nice to see you all. And I gather Hi is in the house. Yes, he is. Hello, Hi. Um, great to see you also. I do have um, the ubiquitous cup of coffee, which is right here. There's nothing like a big cop to get you up in the morning. So I understand. Uh, this is coffee, by the way. So cheers, everybody. Um, good health to everyone. Ooh, gold blend. Uh, just after nine here in NC, North Carolina. Hello, Ray Burleson. It's lovely to see you, man. <laughs> Any new, new po... Uh, hang on, get the teeth in. <laughs> Any new loco purchases from the show, Andy, says Dino. Well, Dino, uh, yes, there is. Uh, some of them I actually bought after uh, Robert departed. So Robert would have seen a fair amount of what I bought. But there was one item that um, I bought rather late on because I was um in an R and as you do. Um, <laughs> so that will remain a secret for the time being. But I did get a Batman Spectrum 460, which is an American style locomotive. On the box, it says undecorated. But then on closer inspection inside, somebody has put it in Union Pacific garb and professionally weathered it. Now, this is a DCC sound locomotive, and I got it for £149, which is about $180, $190, full DCC sound. Yeah, 
Yeah. Also, uh, this was another one we were uh, coming and in about. Uh, a Hatton's 14XX, which was uh, the the DJM model. I hate to say that word, but uh, that acronym. Uh, good price. Uh, yes. But the 14XX is a better price. Uh, considering these models didn't last forever, they sort of came and went, and now they're very much sought after because nobody has bothered to make another 14XX, 14XX being a 044 tank locomotive. Um, I got it for £85. For On eBay, they generally go for double that, for 160 around about there. Just DC, but because of the rarity value, of course the price has gone up, and it's supply and demand. There isn't much supply, but there's still quite a bit of demand. So there were two there. So I left one for Mark at Stanover Railway, told him where to find it um, today, because he's going on the Sunday. And he'll be there about now, raving around. Um, I will come back to tell you a bit more about Ali Pali. Uh, some states are on another planet in the US too. Tim Surf. Yeah, I bet they are, particularly California. Uh, <laughs> we won't mention that. Um, yeah, different countries, different ways. Uh, been looking for a Hatton's 14XX for ages, all too expensive. Boo. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I didn't think £85. I, I thought it was a steal, as long as it's good. I haven't even tested it yet. But um, it's one of those things you just look at and you think, I've wanted this for so long. And you're just looking at the box. You think, I finally got one. I finally got one. Yes. Deep Run Railroad Mike. Hello, Mike. Nice to see you. Uh, I'm, I'm doing some long more military railway stuff today, which you can see passing me in the background. We'll have a few more close-ups as soon as I get through all, all my spiel. Um, the the long and the short of it was, uh, yeah, I did get some bargains, got some extra micro switches I wanted for the layout, for the signalling. Um, smash that like button, please, guys. That's very kind of you. Thank you, Stuart. Get them. Uh, and yeah, what else did I get? Um, I managed to get another uh, English China clay bullet wagon in the chrome. Uh, that was going at a very good price. So I grabbed that. I got three more uh, Hornby uh, English China clay. Talking of English China clay, there's Roger. Hello, Roger. Good afternoon to you. Nice to see you. I hope Cornwall's nice and uh, bright and breezy today, rather than wet and nasty. Um, yes, uh, these are Procore wagons. Now, I do have some of those already, but this was the three-pack. It was a good price, so I snapped them up. Um, yeah, what else did I get? Uh, I got a few f extra Fleischmann coaches for my little German train of the right era. Uh, so, Ivo, if you're in there, uh, these are little four-wheel wagons, about so big, uh, and they'll go nicely with the Class 78 that I have. Post Modern Model Works. Good morning, Andy. Good afternoon to you. Howdy, y'all. Nice to see you, and welcome in. Uh, let's Let's go on to talk about uh, Ali Pali. Well, that was just an absolutely spiffing day. Now, you know you get some of those days where you wake up in the morning and the, your first stretch, you pulled a muscle in your neck. Well, this wasn't one of those. Uh, got up in a, a good time, managed to get a cup of coffee down me. Um, we laid everything out, packed lunch, tickets for the show, uh, cameras and bits and pieces and stuff that we needed um we got everything right um and it was richard's birthday as well so it was it was set to be a really good day as long as we could hold it together 
we got to the station with a good 10, 15 minutes to spare. Because the station isn't far away. It's only two miles. So the wife dropped us off at the station. Andy, can mods share links? I could help if you want to. Um, yeah, um, the, the mods can can share links. Um, I'll, I'll stick with what mods I have because um, the mods I have are, are known and trusted to me. Uh, that's, that's not a slight on anybody else, but um, I've got a set of mods and they, they all do very well. So thank you, Timbersurf. Um, yeah. So Saturday, it dawned fairly murky, wasn't very cold. Um, we got to the station with 10 minutes to spare onto the train. Uh, I think it was a five stopper to get to Alexandra Palace. Waited five, 10 minutes for the bus. The bus took us up there. We got in the queue. There was a couple of hundred in front of us and we, we were there plenty early. Um, and as we were standing there, I did spot Dawn Quest, who was in the queue, about 30 bodies in front of me. So I knew she was there. Um, and we're standing there, and here comes Robert. Boom. So Robert walks past. We scuffed him into the into the queue with us. Nobody objected. Um, you know, if they did, well, there's three of us. What are they going to say? <laughs> so um, Robert came in with us. Um, he'd obviously had a pretty good trip down there to get that there at that time. And it was great to see Robert again. Robert's a real, what can you say about Robert? Um, a real personality, um, a joy to be around. So, yeah, it was great. So we chewed the fat. That helps pass the time as you get in. Then we get inside the venue, but they still haven't quite opened the door yet. You know the kind of situation. I walk past you at the last, walk past you at the last show, Andy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I know what you look. I know what you look like now, Timber. So you know that's easy. Um, but you know what it's like. Like it, there's a lot of bodies there, and sometimes you only catch a hint of somebody's face, and you think, "Was that?" <laughs> And by the time you've reacted, the person's gone and you won't see him again for the rest of the day. Uh, that will chop all in grey. If you can, dear. Right. Okay. Well, I'll let you um, do, do the, um, the, the stuff with um, whatever you do in the chat. That's great. Uh, having to pay £8 for parking. Yeah, well, as I say, we went on the train. And the train wasn't expensive. I think it was about £20 return. Uh, Lintry Town, new double O gauge model railway. Good afternoon to you. Nice to see you. Welcome in. Uh, I'm just going through the wonderful day we had yesterday at Alexandra Palace. And then we got in the venue. And the first place we made a beeline for was Anorax Anonymous. Because they do American and mainly for the American trains. And they do have usually some really top line American trains, uh, Broadway Limited, like Brass, um, NTH, Athern, Genesis, Walthers, all the top stuff. And we tend to head straight there because that's the only place guaranteed I know they'll have American trains. So that was where I grabbed the 460. So brilliant. Four hours, six pounds, 24 hours, eight pounds. Yeah, it's worth getting the eight quid. Because if you if you do Grandpa Rails, nice to see you, JD. <laughs> Welcome in. Uh, I'm just going through the um, the trip to Alexandra Palace yesterday. Now Alexandra Palace is in North London and it's on a, a suitable promontory. It's on a big hill. So you look straight across, across to another big hill, which is Waterloo Park, which is in the distance. And then in the, looking slightly to your left, you can see the city of London quite clearly, the square mile, and the Docklands, because they've both got big sets of tall buildings. 
and there are other landmarks you can pick out um like the incinerator plant at edmonton in north very north of london uh that's <laughs> that's usually got a smell all of its own so yeah it was great um chewed the fat with robert and uh we got ourselves together got around the stalls that's the first thing see if you can find those bargains fairly early on before everything gets picked over and it was just such a nice relaxing day everything worked out like clockwork um like i said it was great to see robert also bumped into an old friend uh don chandler who i worked with at bt uh for a long time uh, don was a very cheerful smiling technical officer um brilliant guy and it was great to see him again um so my cup ran it over uh, lots of friends um and th there are there are people you who catch your eye and you obviously catch theirs and they look at you and you think i know you but by the by that time you've you've walked past each other and the moment's gone anyway i did run into dawn quest and uh a very polite chatty intelligent lady um and i don't know if she had a husband or a companion with her I, I i wondered if it was the grumpy uh cameraman but i'm assured it wasn't but um yeah had a, had a little chat with uh, dawn lovely lady very approachable if you do see her at a train show walk up and say hello she'd be more than pleased um so yeah she's quite a personality and um she's obviously got a passion of model railways we've all got our slant on what model railway should be um which we like to do but very nice lady um I did mention to her that um, some of the comments on her videos were getting hijacked by somebody. You know, uh, ring me on Snapchat sort of thing and this kind of cobblers. And she said, yeah, that's really unfortunate. But I suppose if you get any kind of success, then there'll be a target out there somewhere uh, and they'll go for you. But... It was just such a pleasant day and then um robert bought a few bits and pieces some paint brushes and i won't go into everything else he he bought but did get a few bits and pieces and it was great to walk around with uh with robert and uh, chew the fat and then robert left and we went into the other side of the event which where there's mostly the the set layouts for you to look at uh, rather than the dealers and uh who else we got rj beach <laughs> hey there's robin grace hello there nice to see you um and anybody else tony b hello there nice to see you too and yeah we we went back inside had another look around looked at all the layouts that we could find the one layout i didn't look at was the one robert actually told me about which was uh this one that interests roger it's the um the brunel's bridge uh, across from devon to cornwall uh the salt ash bridge and they did that in in scale i believe and that didn't fall under my eye but there was a very good logging american logging exhibition there uh and that was fabulous it was one of the the big narrow gauge things so it's a ho hon 30 something like that and it was fabulous it ran really well there was plenty going on always something moving and you know i like american locos so and these had dcc sounds and the sound was really good uh trestle bridges lots of things to look at it was i did ca catch a little bit of it on my phone uh was a helper at the motorbike show at ali pali must do the model railway show sometime 
It'd be great to have you down here, Timber. Um, anyway, I think um, Robert might have got a few shots of that. He did indeed because he showed me, uh, which is on his phone. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to see that again. There's probably lots of people out there who are going to put up videos and haven't done quite yet. Um, let's face facts, the place was heaving. Uh, there were lots and lots of people there. Um, luckily, not, not a lot of smelly people. I didn't detect any BO or um, anything like that. Uh, I think it was sufficiently cool enough to uh, keep everybody cool. But, yeah, it was, um, it was a really good show. I'm not sure how much the concessions of, like, food was. Uh, Robert will be out to tell you that because we took a pack up lunch with us. Um, but yeah, it was just a great day. And then as we came out of there with our spoils, uh, the longest wait was for the bus getting back down to the station, which is a free bus. Um, that was about 20, 25 minutes, maybe half an hour. But we still made the, the train back that we anticipated that we were going to get. And then we got back in plenty of time. There was no rushing about, no, oh, I've missed this. What a bummer. Pasty, very nice. £5.50? Okay. I suppose, considering where you are, £5.50. But, you know, it's a £2 pasty. But they, they just up the price. Uh, Woodthorpe International, known as Collins Engage. Hello, Colin. <laughs> Oh, I had a good day yesterday. Yeah, I was just um, going to wrap it up for, for yesterday. It was a really good day. Um, got lots of bits and pieces. As I say, it was Richard's birthday. So he was on the lookout for various bits and, and bobs, which he did get. He got a little bit more, uh, some more wagons for the Somerset and Dorset Railway, which are like rocking horse poop. Uh, difficult to get and usually expensive when you do find them. Um, so it, it was a hard, hard eating without my teeth. Well, funny enough, I put my teeth in. So, um, but I don't usually eat with my false teeth. Uh, I'd rather take them out and, and take my chances. <laughs> um, but I, you know, it depends if you get something really hard, like a bit of crust or something like that. It can dig in the gum somewhat. So, yeah, I do know where you're coming from. Uh, I'll give Cornwall a miss then. <laughs> well, their, their pies are usually, when you go and get a pasty in Cornwall, they're usually done to perfection rather than underbaked or overbaked. They usually come out just right uh, with just enough in the pastry so it doesn't actually hurt you when you're trying to eat the bloody thing. Um yeah, as I say, it was great to see Robert. Um, yeah, that, that does make the show somewhat because uh, Robert's a great guy. And, um, yeah, it was just a, a super day. We had a, a really good time. And then when we got back, um, what did we have for dinner? It was uh, a takeaway, Burger Box, um, which is superb. They do really good burgers. I believe they're in Stevenage. Um, but you can get it delivered. Signal Cabin, good afternoon. Nice to see you. Anyway, I'm just going to get you down that uh, down to rail level, and we can have a look at this Longmore Military Railway stuff. Um, so, yeah, check out some of the colours on these. It's quite a, quite a vivid blue. Um, not garish, but like a royal blue. So take a look at this. Right, let's uh, drag you down to trackside. I'll just um, do a brief check on what the sound levels are like. That should that should give us a good idea. Oh, sorry about that. I just moved you. Oh, I'm so moved. There we go. Right, is everyone sitting comfortably? <laughs> Cheers, everybody. There's a big cock.
Right, here comes a 280, Longmore Military Railway. And you can see what I mean about the, the blue and the red. It's very much in the style of German railways. And then some various stock with Longmore Military Railway written on the side. And there right at the end is an LMR brake wagon. And my present to Richard this year was the Class 11 that you just saw going through. It's like a Class 08 shunter with a few differences. Um, it's uh, made by Hill Jan, and they've done a superb job on it. Um, it may well lead into the Class 08 shunter by Hill Jan if they've uh, modified their tooling and they can do that kind of stuff. There's some Longmore Military Railway coaches that were actually made by Backman, and they are pretty rare. If you ever see any of those, snap them up. Even if you don't use them yourself, you could resell them for a fortune. Uh, I think we got lucky last year with those. They were on sale at Worley. Well, I think it was, um, was it Renman or somebody like that? And Richard's eagle eyes just spotted them. And he couldn't believe what he was seeing. Uh, talking about meeting YouTuber mates, apparently I'm organising the meet and greet at the Model Rail Crew in June. Details nearer the time. Oh, that's good. I'm, if I can make that, Timber, then I will. But um, that would take a bit of doing because it means getting across to the Euston branch, and that may well mean going all the way into King's Cross, uh, tube train to Euston, jump on that Euston and head to Crew. I don't know if there is a cross-country service going from what used to be the London North East over to the LMS. Yeah, that's funny, Roger. I, I thought, should I put it the conventional way or should I put it arse end first and <laughs> I just happened to put it on the way that you thought I might so I'm only glad to oblige it was funny that I thought I wonder if he's got wasp stripes on it it doesn't but um, that might be an interesting idea I don't think the military use wasp stripes and looking at the model I don't think it does yeah, this is the Class 11. And it's very much a, a Class 8 type shunter with a few differences. But Helgen have done a superb job with it. It runs really sweetly. And uh, that was my birthday present to Richard this year. Could have done with a meet and greet at Ali Pally, as I miss seeing lots of those who were there. Yeah, but you know what it was like, Robert? It, you would have to specify a time and then you'd have to whip people away from the bargains they were searching out to go and stand there and chew the fat for an hour or half an hour, um, which is tough to do when you're looking for things. Uh, meet and greet is free once you get in the venue. Transport and entrance fee, £7 or at your own expense. Is that uh, crew? Is that the crew one? Seven pound. Okay, I'm going to head off to bed. Been a long day. Take care, everyone. Catch you all throughout the week. RT, you have some good luck, man, and uh, happy dreams. Hey, did anyone in the UK ever dare to compare the class 08 shunter? with the Roco NS600 NS class. I don't think there is ever, anybody's ever done a comparison, Ivo. Um, maybe that's some, that may be something to look into. The only difference is we're looking at two different scales. 
but you know they're probably of similar size so you've got to remember class i chanters in this country were literally everywhere you couldn't go into a yard where they didn't have one and they usually had worn bearings which caused this clunking sound on their rods which gave them their nickname the gronks because as it comes past you you wouldn't hear the engine all you hear is gronk 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 and so the name stuck a bit when is the crew event i know it's june andy The Dutch Class 600 is actually a Class 11 in export trim. How about that? Now, that I didn't know. June the 23rd. For those that don't have a glaze. <laughs> uh, do it like gets later in the day, say 11 o'clock, then all the bargain hunters can get their stuff. That's a good point, Robert. <coughs> Yeah, um, if they're anything like me, I have to rummage through two or three times. You see, some of these dealers are crafty. They'll wait until the stock goes down a bit, and then they'll pull out another box that they've been hiding and pop another load of stuff on there, which is a bit crafty. Because you think, hang on, I've, I've, I just went through there 15 minutes ago, and I know that wasn't there. I was thinking of 2 p.m. That's not a bad that's not a bad shout, Timber, actually. I think you could be right there. That that's a very good shout, actually. Because then I think people will be a little more softened up. And having bought their spoils, then they'll be sharing they'll or they'll want to share with somebody else what they've actually managed to get. Right, what I'll do, I'll um, I'll pull off the big two eight zero, and I'll pop on one of the one of the tank locomotives that we have. Right, just give me a second, boys and girls. Right, there we go. Just pop that off there, like that. I'll run that back into the sidings. They'll be coming past you any second now, light engine. Right, I'll just get that uh, back into its siding. Oh, have we got James in there? Hello, James. Nice to see you, man. Right, let's just pop that one off. I'll get one of these little beauties out. And we'll run this one. Right then, off we go. Oh, that's gone a little more quiet now. <laughs> right, I've just popped on one of the little tank engines that the Longmore Military Railway also used to use. So I'll just stop that as it comes past, and you can take a look at it. Right, stop! Right, here's a modified view. That's what it looks like. Again, I believe this is a DJM model, uh, Dave Jones. Uh, which I think he did in cohab with Colonel Model Rail, I think. But, yeah, spiffing little engine. This one runs very well. Here comes the Class 08 shunter, which is a little beauty. And the stop that goes with it. Sorry, it's a little blurry. It's a little close on the camera there, I'm afraid. Perhaps I'll uh, give you a bit more depth. There we go. Right, so if I pop you looking that way, 
I'll get this one started. Let's get this party started. There we go. Right then. A WD Austerity 060. Thank you, Ivo. That's exactly what it is. And yeah, a, a very nice little engine. Now, a couple of the ones we have are DCC sound. But I can't remember which of the ones in the siding are actually DCC sound or not. And as you know, when I switch over, it's DCC or DC. There's not much in between. I really can't run both at the same time. Yeah, nice to see you, James. Thanks for joining us. I know it must be early there, but um, always great to see you. Leaving for mass soon, I understand. Love a blue and red class 11. Very similar to the old German liveries. Yeah, that, that's what I think. It really does give that vibe. But it, it's, a, it's a strange blue. Um, I think the, the Hell Jam one is actually a little lighter blue than the one you're seeing there, the austerity. But those coaches, again, it, it's like a royal blue. Ah, GWR Buckley Junction. There's Sean. Hello, Sean. Nice to see you. Yeah, Timber, I think that was Sean being funny. You know what Sean's like. Funny man. <laughs> How are we doing? Um, we have 38 members in the live chat which is extraordinarily good. Thank you all so much for coming. And 32 likes, which is also very good. Ah, oh, that's everyone. Cheers, Andy. <laughs> yeah, it looks like everybody's fine. Oh, right. Hello, Peter. I've been told to get myself in here by Robert and Robert's Trains or else. <laughs> oh, good afternoon to you, Peter. Um, I've got some long more military railway stuff coming today, which might float your boat, Peter. It's in a, like a royal blue. So there's the Class 11 coming towards you and a little Austerity 060 going the other way with a, a long more military railway train with it. So that's what we're running today. Um, for your information, Peter, yeah, we had a wonderful day yesterday at um, Ali Pali. Uh, the weather was fairly good, and as you know, Robert's great company, so it was a super day. Uh, what did I get? Um, I got a, an American 460 DCC sound for 149 pounds, um, professionally weathered as well, where the box said undecorated, so somebody got to town on it. Um, what else did I get? Oh, uh, a Hatton's 14XX, which is the old DJM model, for £85, which I thought was a steal. Um, for those of you that don't know Tor who Tor Torridon Road is, that is Peter Dixon. Uh, Peter's a great guy, great sense of humour, um, does a brilliant channel with great photography, so um, if one of the mods can pop Peter's channel in there, it's well worth a look, well worth a subscribe. And uh, Peter's a very friendly guy, very funny and uh, quite knowledgeable. I beg to differ, Roger, um, Robert. I, I really am that old. <laughs> Um, testing 29 second-hand point motors. Rock and roll lifestyle, you. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, Chris, please don't remind me of that bargain of yours. Somebody got a bargain other than me? Good heavens. <laughs> uh, 
And did I see Delft Junction, Pete? Oh, hello there, Pete. Uh, Longmoor Military Railway. I did promise that today. Um, so you'll see a Class 11, which is a bit like an IH Hunter, and uh, an Austerity 060 uh, popping around with a couple of Longmoor Military Railway coaches, which are backmen, but are like hen's teeth. I haven't got the old age pension yet. Well, uh, that's I haven't got it from the state, but I have got it from my former company. So, yes, I um, I am not actively seeking work. Let's put it like that, Robert. 20 point motors for 29 quid. Whoa, that's not bad. As long as they work and they work well. And when it comes to when it comes to the permanent way like this, I tend to buy new. I thought if, if I buy new, then I'm only going to have to do it once. And if there's anything wrong with it, it goes back to the manufacturer. So, um, yeah, that's what copy decks and uh, what's that stuff I use? Woodland Scenics Roadbed. That's what it can do for you. I mean, that's fully ballasted, that track. But um, there is no replacement for, where's it gone? For this stuff. Copy decks. It's uh, latex glue. Um, and it's really good. I know it's expen it could be expensive, but it's worth it. Because it's better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Uh, for all my... My ballast, this is what I used. Yes, so you can see the price on that, £13.75. It's not uh, particularly cheap. That one says course on it, and that really isn't course. Um, I've just reused this um, this one. Let me find uh, another one down here. Oh, that says course on it as well. What do I do with the rest? There it is. Oh. There we go. That was most of what I used, medium ballast and fine ballast. But I think the medium is is what I've mostly used on the layout. And, yeah, good stuff. I like it. Um, I don't know if chinchilla sand is too big or too small, but this stuff is designed for what you want to use it for, for model railways. And that's the kind of thing I tend to go for. Yeah, I did. Um, I did see the new glue that you had. It looked like um, looked like it was. It had a pretty good grab on it, Robert. Maybe too good. But again, it didn't stick to the plastic on the back of the ties too well, did it? So it was a, a good cohesion. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Just right. Can't distinguish between that and ballast. I've got chinchilla sand. Great stuff. That's great. If if it if it suits you, and it's what you had in mind, fine. But when somebody shows me their layout and I said, "Oh, that's really good," and they say, "Well, this is what I used," then I thought, "Well, if they can get results like that, I'll go with what they've used." And a lot of that happens. It, it goes by word of mouth. So that's why I went for the, the Woodland Scenic stuff, um, because it's designed for that purpose, for a model railway. Even Richard of New Junction is using it, yeah. But if it's a cheaper alternative and you're happy with it, yeah, run with it, by all means. Get a track with uh, glass paper should be better. Well, yeah, it'll obviously give it a better key. But I don't think you'll have trouble with that coming up unless you, say, drop an anvil on it. Just saw four kilos of chinchilla sand for £10.75. That's not bad. How much is in this? Um, well, that's just got it in uh, cubic centimetres. It doesn't even have weight on it. But full up, I'd say... That's around a pound and a half of sugar type of thing. Emerald Down Model Railway. Hello, Mark. 
Nice to see you. Good afternoon to you. I'm just running some Longmoor Military Railway stuff today. Um, coming around in front of you, you will see the, the latest edition I got for Richard for his birthday, which is the Longmoor Military Railway Class 11 Shunter. And also, coming from behind you, there will be an 060 Austerity, uh, also in Longmoor Military Railway colours. Mum and son train rail fans, good morning. It's nice to see you, Tammy and Ray. Lovely to see you. Ah, I think James is off to church. Have a good day, James. If there's anybody I haven't spotted in the live stream, uh, I do apologise. Um, obviously, not done deliberately, but uh, when the when the chat takes off, it's uh, sometimes difficult to keep an eye on it and what the engines are doing at the same time. So yes, Longmore Military Railway. It's um, it's a, a little taste that we've acquired. There isn't much out there, so that I think that. To us, that makes it more attractive because it's that much more difficult to source the engines which are actually made in those colours. And those coaches that were made by Backman, they were very difficult to get and quite expensive. Uh, Ivo, I'd love to, but I would have to dig the Class 78 out and I'm not exactly sure where it is in storage. So I'll happily run it for you next week, if that suits you. Because by the time I finish rummaging for it, the, the show would be over. <laughs> North Yorkshire Heritage Railways is in money trouble. Uh, that goes with the turf, Pete. It really does. Is the signal auto or decoder driven? Yes, um, they are autonomous signals. There is no connection between the signals and the track. There is a sensor right here, which is a little infrared sensor there. And then when the train goes over, it will go into a sequence like that. As that goes over, it will do the same. This one runs on a timer, but it is connected to the other signals, of which there are four, uh, which change the aspect as it goes around because they are actually joined together. But this one in particular is, is a special. Uh, yeah, there are boards underneath made by Heath, Heathcote Electronics. Um, yeah, they're very reliable. Um, standalone 12 volt boards very good you're welcome you're welcome Lintree yeah I was a little surprised when you told me about that Robert uh, Hornby Hornby Mag Daypole and Rouser Sheffield not there uh, which is a shame because it would have been good for Daypole to be there because we were looking for one of those um, ROD car key moguls that they just bought out. But that's something for the future. I think they're £154 at the retailer. Uh, but I didn't see one of them yesterday. I mean, I was looking, but I didn't see any of the moguls which weren't Great Western. Um, Tim, Rails have already said it won't be attending shows. That's a shame. That's a shame. They should go out of their way. They should have a dedicated team 
to do exhibitions. Um, now they're probably the biggest in the country. They should actually do that, I think, because their stance was superb. And there was always plenty of choice and plenty of things to buy. Um, and if you needed advice from Rails, it, they were always there to give it. And it's a big miss for the railway community not having Rails of Sheffield um, at a big event like that. There's no point turning up with a booth and four guys standing there picking their nose. Uh, you need... You need bums on seats. You need sales, and they should um, have a dedicated team going out to exhibitions, um, doing nothing but that. Um, so that's just my opinion. I think Rail should do that because they should have a presence and not really get too big for their boots and just sit back. Um, the money's out there. They should go out there and grab it. And then they will stay the biggest and they will stay in business. Yeah, if you're going to have people actually at the rail sh shop doing that, yeah, it would knacker them out. But if you have a dedicated team doing it who do nothing but exhibitions all year long, um, that's what they would do for a living. Um, you know, you might... Uh, rotate the team occasionally why not but it would be nice to have a dedicated team going out and putting rails of Sheffield right where they should be right at the top of the model railway game yes I'm very much in favour of rails of Sheffield um, they I don't think they go out of their way to do anybody down um, They've got a good reputation, uh, a better reputation than Hatton's had, and they should keep it and encourage it, I think. 156 Andrew Shortbread Express. Hello there. Nice to see you. Yeah, it, it, must, be, it must be tough to work in the shop at Sheffield and then go out and do all of the exhibitions as well. But like I say, if they get a dedicated team to do it, then that's what they would do all year round. And, um, yeah, I think that would solve a lot of the problems. In my opinion, it might cost them an arm and a leg to do, and I don't know the ins and outs of it, but uh, I prefer Kernow models. Yes, we also use Kernow models. That's one of our go-tos. Um, again, great service. We never have any problems with Kerno. Um, every time I'm in Cornwall, I'll drop in at, on Camborne and uh, go into the shop itself. I know they've got a shop at Guildford as well. Uh, they should be more hands-on at exhibitions, Andy. I use TMC more. Yeah, TMC. They were there yesterday at Ali Pally. And also... Um, also, Kerno Monorail were there. Their prices were a bit high, but I suppose, yeah. Okay, thanks for coming in, Roger. Great to see you, man. I'm going to uh, actually prepare to shut down for the day because I just did get a... I did get an indication that uh, Dave at Swindon Junction had just gone live. So I will make way for Dave. Uh, not keen on Kerno. Not good service in my case. Bloody oak I bought is dead on arrival. The only dead on arrival I've ever had. Yeah, well, that's the problem. You, you get a bad experience right at the start and it does put you off somewhat. But we've always had pretty good um, experience with Kerno, and uh, I think they're pretty good. TMC, on the other hand, uh, we had a, a Friday night special from them, so we're very reticent to use TMC. Um, again, it depends on the individual. Uh, TMC did not buy anything from them. 
they were handing out bags with bumps in them. So I got one of those. <laughs> yeah, I see. Got to chase some people up about work tomorrow. Thanks for the live. Cheers, Math. Nice to see you. Who's next? Uh, yeah. Good. Good question. So I'm going to make way for Dave. And uh, thanks, everybody, for coming in. I do appreciate it. Um, the live stream is nothing without the, the support and um, and the people to uh, chew the fat with. Uh, I had a similar experience with TMC and avoid using them if I can. Yeah. Um, it's down to the individual, though, our, our individual experiences. Okay, thanks, Tony. Nice to see you. Uh, Pete, good one. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming in. I will uh, catch up with you next Sunday, and uh, I'll probably run some of the spoils of what we got this week. And uh, it's great to see everybody. Um, thanks all very much for coming in. Uh, sorry, Digger's on the phone at the minute. Martin O'Keefe. Cheers, Martin. Great to see you in. And uh, thanks, everybody, for coming in. Uh, thanks, Peter and Chris and Robert. It was great to see you. And uh, I'll catch you all out there very soon. Dave Swindon Junction is over on the other channel. And uh, I'll uh, catch, you, catch some of you across there in a minute. So cheers for now. Take care, everybody.